Hello once again, wonderful humans. Welcome back to Board Game Dads. My name is Anthony. And my name is Eric. And this is the Board Game Dads Summer Block Party, um, second to last episode. Last theme of the seven themes, but we do still have our live show next week, so please be sure to tune into that, chat with us live, and we're going to talk about some of your comments from the previous videos. Um, speaking of that, so we had six other themes of summer. Today is the last one. I don't know. I don't want to say save the best for last, right? That's not applicable here. I mean, your favorite was Shark Week, I think, right? I mean, we sort of covered... All right, so it's the ocean, right? That's what this one is. It's the ocean. Right. We sort of covered some of the ocean with Shark Week. We sort of covered some ocean-ish games with Pirates. And, you know, in a couple of the other videos, Santa Monica has got, you know, the ocean in it. So we've, yeah. we've touched on it here and there. This is actually about the ocean, not just sharks. And uh, Yeah, we're, yeah. we're diving right in now. We're not just right. kind of like getting our feet wet. This is all about ocean games. And we're pretty excited. We've we've had a great time, I got to say, during this whole block party. We had some cool special guests. We talked about a whole bunch of games. And uh, we heard from, from you folks, from your listeners and, and your watchers or your viewers, whatever you got to call yourselves. Um, and it was really fun. So I'm, I'm happy that we did this. And we've got some more plans in the future for some more event-type things like this, which we'll talk about a little later on in the grand scheme of things. But for now... I'm going to stop rambling, and we're going to start focusing on the ocean. So, Eric, when we talk about the ocean besides sharks, what other things come to mind? Well, I've been fascinated with the ocean since I've been a kid, right? The the, the sea life, all, ty all types of sea life, including, you know, the stuff that doesn't exist anymore. But, you know, you think maybe because we know more about the moon than we know about the bottom of the ocean. And there, <laughs> there's just there's some amazing creatures that develop all types of abilities uh, bioluminescence and, and yeah. just like e extreme temperatures that they can survive in and it's it's crazy and yeah so and I love some those. some scary looking stuff down there as well some but, really uh, scary and some of the scariest looking stuff is like harmless but still yeah you know. <laughs> uh but some really beautiful looking stuff too and i think the games that we're going to talk about today certainly highlight uh a lot of the really stunning views and, and scenes that are in in the ocean both you know on the close to the surface and way down deep so right. without further ado i would say let's move on to some honorable mentions um i'm gonna go ahead and give my one first if that's okay because i know i usually have several and i usually only have one uh, <laughs> i try to keep it to one but then at the last second i change it and i just <laughs> shoot off in all different directions so one of the, the sort of sub-themes under the whole ocean um, kind of umbrella is, is ocean exploration. And so this one is, is Deep Sea Adventure, which is all about diving down with your scuba divers in this submarine, trying to get the most valuable treasure. It's got a pretty cool kind of push-your-luck thing, like how far deep into the ocean do you want to go? Because the farther down you go, the longer it's going to take you to get back up. And the cool kind of catch about that is in this game, all the players, it's not cooperative, but you're all sharing the oxygen supply of the submarine, which can make for some pretty interesting decisions. And, you know, you're kind of like, yeah, uh, it's, it's push your luck with some, some big ramifications. <laughs> when you play this game with three or four players, everybody gets greedy. Yeah. Nobody gets back to the ship or to the submarine <laughs> with any treasures. You do like four rounds, and finally one person gets smart, gets out of the ship, grabs the first thing they see, and gets back onto the ocean. Yeah, yeah, yep. uh, could be that one, that little, little, tiny, yep. almost invaluable or next to nothing treasure that could win it for you. Um, yeah, if you never heard of Deep Sea Adventure, definitely check it out. Very simple looking game, but very elegant and a whole lot of fun. And it's in oh. the tiniest box you can imagine. It's this, yeah, it's this one of those big. oink games. Yep, yep. All right, Eric, so what do you got for us for the HMs in the ocean? All right, so you did, you know, ocean exploration, you know, salvaging treasure from the bottom, that that kind of mm -hmm. thing. And so the other main theme of the ocean that I didn't touch on with my other games is, like, underwater civilizations. And there's a bunch of different games where there's – you're playing, you know, some resource management game, a worker placement game, whatever, and the setting is just – an underwater civilization instead of a farm or some European countryside. 
And so the game that I want to talk about, all right, that I'm not going to talk about, but I'm going to briefly mention is Underwater Cities. It's a cool game. It's kind of long, and we've only played it once, but we enjoyed it. There's just kind of a lot of rules, a lot of little things to learn, and then to be able to replay it, you got to get a few plays under the belt in order to really remember what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. We're not there I, yet. I remember you being very excited about this game when it first yeah. came out, actually. Um, it's underwater. Yeah, it's <laughs> literally underwater, <laughs> underwater cities. Um, so, yeah, that's cool. I'll, I would check that one out. But like you said, it's, it seems like you have to kind of devote a good amount of time to it, especially yeah. if you haven't played it too recently. Indeed. It is what it is. All right, so on to some official picks here. Eric, your first game is really as on the nose as we can get for the theme of this one. <laughs> What's your first game? It's called Oceans. There you go. <laughs> we're doing we're doing about oceans, and the game's called Oceans. So this is a North Star game, or by North Star Games. And if you've played Evolution, then you pretty much understand the core rules of Oceans. Uh, the game is it's about 60 to 90 minutes plays two to four and it's it says 12 and up on board game gear on the box but on board game geek it says 10 and up so there's a reef variant that you can play that makes the game a little bit more basic but otherwise okay. it's it's an engine building game it's got some take that it's got some hand management and it's got hidden victory points which is cool because the fish that you are eating throughout the game you're hiding behind the screen, but then you're also going to be using them. You're spending them. So you can't just count somebody's as they go, Oh, they got this many because they're also spending them to pay for cards later on. Okay. Uh, so that's pretty much the core mechanisms of the game. And the way the game plays is you turn, there's four phases. First, you're going to play a card or two cards, depending on if uh, something has been triggered in the game. And then you're going to feed one of your species. Then you're going to age all your species, which means, you're going to remove one fish population from each species that you have and score them as points. Again, at a certain point in the game, you'll be doing this for two fish, or two population of each fish, and then they'll be going behind your screen as points. If okay. you can't age the full amount, they go extinct. And you just lose them, and that's it. But you still keep all the, all the fish that you've been eating the entire time. Uh, and then you draw discard any cards you don't want, except for deep cards. And you draw back up to six. Now, deep cards are something that's unique to this game that they didn't have in Evolution. These are all unique cards. And some of them are pretty aggressive, but all the artwork is unique. And it's really cool. It, it, it changes the game a little bit because you don't know what the opponent's going to get. It's not the same <clears throat> 12 different traits that they're going to be playing. So you kind of know what to expect. This is everything's off the table. You don't know what's going to happen. Somebody okay. gets a deep card. You're like, oh man, that could be a huge card where they could just attack me and eat like, you know, 10 of my fish right off the bat. <laughs> um, but the game has a couple really cool things about it. When it's not your turn, something could happen that will trigger one of your fish to eat. You might be the closest whale cleaner on one side or the closest shark cleaner. And then all of a sudden there was an attack. Somebody ate a fish. And then you get to eat, you know, a couple of free fish. And oh. so you're really engaged in other people's turns because, you know, you could miss something and, and not use one of the traits that you have. So that that's really cool. It's also cool that if, if you get attacked and somebody attacks you and takes like the last five of your fish, your fish doesn't go extinct. You still have a turn where you can do stuff maybe trigger things, and then when you get to feed one fish, feed that fish, and then he won't go extinct. So it's hmm. it's got to take that, but it's <clears throat> it's nice. So you can only feed one of your fish per turn. There's, like, no exceptions to that at all? Right. Uh, well, there could be traits that okay. allow okay. an additional uh, species to feed. Is that really how remember. evolution Is that how evolution works also? Yeah, pretty. I think – certain traits allow oh this guy can you know eat from over here before feeding and this person gets to feed twice depending on the traits that you have they're okay. they're all different and and this one with the deep cards all the all the deep cards are all unique i have no idea what what you could possibly do in this game you could have some crazy sea creatures that's cool yeah and the artwork is great now most of the deep most of the artwork it's fictional they're trying to you know make these things look cool but a lot of the traits are educational 
it, these are real things that can happen. You know, it's not like they're shooting laser beams out of their eye, but you know, some of them could be super powerful and, and you know, they can, they can blend in or they can be invisible. They can have, you know, create light and, and all these things are in the game. So it's, hmm. it's cool. So given the choice between this and evolution, this every time, oh, every time, okay. every time. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, unless it's national dinosaur day. But with evolution, I have to play it with the climate expansion. The game, because it doesn't have those deep style cards, needs something else, and climate adds something else. So, three hundred sixty-four days out of the year, you would pick this one. Oh yeah, this is this is pretty much either my number ten favorite game or just outside the top ten. Wow. Yeah, okay. this is this is a great game. I didn't get the Kickstarter version where they have like upgraded fish or something like that. And, and my brother did, I've seen them and they're all acrylic fish hmm. and they're like, like a, like a translucent color and the fish that come with this game, they're just cardboard, but they're pretty decent quality cardboard and they have such cool patterns on them and they're way better looking than the translucent ones, which I don't have a picture of. <laughs> uh, now again, uh, we've talked about oceans before, and whenever I talk about oceans, I have to complain about the box. I, it's a great game, wonderful game, but that box, you have four sides. Just put the name of the game going sideways on one of them. Why? Why, why does that bother you so much? Because I have to put it, one of these four sides has to, has to face out. Everything else has the name of the game, except for this and like two or three other ones. Why can't you just do what everybody expects you to do so that the board game shelf looks nice? Put out an expansion and include a sleeve. Done. I'll buy it. Ah, uh, you keep the sleeves on any, on any boxes that come with those? Everdell. I mean, we got the sleeve. We might as well use it. I don't throw them out. There's no point. It doesn't take up a lot of space. See, I feel like damaged. the only game I, I think the only game I, I have that has one is, is Harry Potter House Cup competition. I'm looking at it right now, and the sleeve like, kind of like bends out because it's not like mm -hmm. you know stuck to the to the box itself. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't really care about them, but I would need one for Oceans. I might even buy two, in case it gets dinged up over the years. <laughs> this game, because this game's not going anywhere. This game is going to be a, a favorite game for for a very very long time. You should get rid of evolution then if you're going to play that on one day out of the year. My kids might like it when they get older. That's true. My first pick here for Oceans is a very abstract game, although it is a very pretty looking abstract, uh, and that's called Reef. So Reef is a game where you're going to be stacking up these nice plastic chunky coral type things on your player board trying to get the right patterns, scoring those patterns on cards. There's really a not, there really is not a lot to this game. Basically on your turn, there's only two things that you can possibly do. You either take a card from the display that's out there, or you play one from your hand. If you take a card from the display, that's your whole turn, it's over. If you play a card from your hand, you're gonna do two things. So the cards in this game have a top and a bottom part, and Basically, you're going to do the top part first, which is collect two, whatever two uh, pieces of coral or reef that are on that card. And then the bottom part is the optional one. That's going to show you the pattern that could score you points. So if you have that pattern, you can score those points, but you don't have to. You're still going to get that the two uh, pieces from the top. If you have that pattern more than one time on your board, you can score it multiple times. So like... For example, there's some that are just, you know, you need two uh, stacks that are too high. If you have a bunch of those, then you could score two points per those. You could multiply that by seven, eight, however many of those you have. Other ones are going to be a little bit harder, like, you know, four in a square. You're not going to be able to put that in multiple places on your board. But it's always kind of changing the way that your layout is because you're stacking on top and only the one that's on top counts when you're, scoring these patterns i should note that you can only stack up to four high 
Um, and then once you can never take any of them off, so you're not going to move them around at all. The game ends when one of the colors completely runs out, and then everyone has one last chance to score any cards they have in their hand. Uh, we picked this one up at PAX Unplugged a couple of years ago. It was super cheap. It was like a no-brainer, and and it, it's fun. It's it's uh, got a good table presence, nice plastic chunky pieces, and pretty easy to teach. You guys have this one too, I think, right? We do not have this one. This one. You don't? Oh, I thought I thought I looks, played this with you. It looks so cool, but because it's abstract. I don't know that we're gonna like it, so this is a try before we buy. And because we've almost, I've almost gotten this a couple of times, but I just been holding off because it's so popular that I know somebody's gonna have it, and we're just checking out there. But yeah, we love the theme. Don't really like abstract strategies that much. Some of them, you know, yeah. obviously, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I like this one because it's pretty quick and it's not super stressful. I mean, you can certainly get a little bit of AP over which cards to kind of get rid of to play, which cards to keep. But yeah, it's a cool one. Reef, check that one out. Um, they recommend, and by they I meant Board Game Geek, uh, 8 and up for that, and mm. that's the same as a community one. So I I'd say that's a pretty good uh, measure for this one. You know, any abstract game that you play, if you, and I mean like adults, are playing with kids, you're going to have an advantage, you know, pretty often and early on in the whole process the more you play the more i'm assuming that the kid would be would improve at the game but to start off it, it it's going to be tough to keep it even unless you're going to like purposely kind of take it easy on them i think in my opinion yeah that's why i'm a big fan of cooperative games yeah yeah for sure agreed speaking of cooperative games oh ooh, what a segue <laughs> my next game my final game is called Ocean Crisis. Dun, dun, dun. Now, this game, I love this game. It plays two to five. Uh, I think the age range is eight and up, but on BGG it says six to eight, or six six and up is fine. And it's over in about 45 minutes. It's not that long of a game. It's a cooperative game, and on your turn, you can either try to remove some trash from the river or the ocean, because the river leads to the ocean, or you can place some land tiles down and the land tiles you're going to be making pathways to different areas on the board that might unlock some recycling machine that'll help you do your job better you know like hmm. cleaning the ocean from of garbage and it's really cool it's got such a positive message it's made from recyclable materials and it's got maybe three side missions or scenarios that come with the game. So while you're playing the game, you can also be trying to save the shark or the dolphin or the sea turtle or, or, or something like hmm. that. So it's got a little bit of wildlife in there as well. And really it, it, it's just, it's a, it's a cool little game and it's got that, that cooperative element to it where sometimes, and this is, again, this is eight and up. Sometimes this game can be very difficult. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the garbage just piles up and you're like, we're never going to clean the ocean. The shark's going to die. You know, like everything's going to go in wrong. And That's very thematic. <laughs> well, because there's dice rolling in it. So when you go to clean the garbage, you're, you're rolling a die and you could not clean the garbage. You could roll too low. You could, you could only reduce it. You could, you could, you know, so it's, it's, it's got a little bit of push your luck in it as well. And it, it's just, it's it's a fun it's a fun experience and I've only I've played it as adult right you know as an adult eventually my kids are going to play it and I hope they appreciate it as much as me and my wife do. So these smaller mats right here are the side <laughs> like side quests only that you, you can do these. Yeah, in these are these are missions game. and scenarios that you can do while playing the game. You don't have to. You can play just a very basic simple game. Okay. And again, it's not it's not simple, but it, it's basically like you, you understand what's happening. It's just not easy. Um, now this game is by Shepherd Kit, which hmm. is that company that did Forest Guardians, which was also made 100% by with recyclable materials. But again, you know, I, I I feel like I just ragged on Oceans for that box. I gotta rag on Shepherd Kit for this stupid mascot they have of, of this little that thing, this like <laughs> fox in a diaper. 
<laughs> like what a swing and a miss. Why? Fox in a diaper. So uh, just to be clear, is this a what a, does that have to do with the ocean also? <laughs> well, he's cleaning up, he's got plastic. Eva, why is he wearing a diaper? Maybe, now just hear me out. Maybe that diaper is full of recyclable materials and garbage that he's cleaned up for the ocean. He just keeps stuffing it in there. So that's how much how much work he's done today. So he's a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> now, is this a playable character in the game, or is it just like an extra piece of cardboard that comes with it? I think that's the first player marker. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you have to see it. <laughs> Ugh. Uh, does the game, the game is really happen? awesome. You know, I, I hate to go out on such a sour note, but the game is really awesome. It's and it's cooperative, and it, it is a, ga a great game to play with kids. But uh. does, to your knowledge, does Forest Guardians have one of these annoying mascots as well? It's got the same one because it's it's Shepherd Kit is the company is the yeah they're they're like the publisher or designer or whatever, and so they have this same thing in both games. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's just amusing to me that it bugs you so much, but it is it is pretty it is pretty stupid looking. I yeah, will say it is it is. <laughs> cool. Ocean Crisis is a game that has been on my uh, to play list for quite a while, actually. Um, in fact, I, I think that like the last few times I've been at your house. It's been one of the things that's been, oh, we can play this, we can play this, we can play Ocean Crisis. Um, so I definitely want to get that one. Give that one a shot for sure. And like you said, a great teaching um, game to a great real-life experience there with the yeah. cleaning up the ocean. That's Can't cool. talk about the ocean and not mention protecting the ocean. Yeah, yeah. All right, so my second and final pick here in the ocean theme is a game by uh, Anton Bowser, who is one of my favorite designers because he designed Ghost Stories, Seven Wonders, and this one here, Oceanos, which is a really cool looking game. Uh, the components are fantastic. We'll get into that a little bit later, but the basic gameplay here is you're going to be exploring the ocean over three rounds, and you're gonna get these cards. You're gonna take one that you wanna use, put it face down, and then everyone's going to reveal that card. And you're basically building these rows of these cards. So each round, you're going to start a new row. Uh, they have different symbols on them. There's either some kind of sea creature or a combination of a sea creature. Uh, some of them have treasure chests. Some of them have these crystals. And some of them have eyes of the Kraken, which are bad. And some of them have some coral reef. And basically, you're going to build this tableau over three rounds. Scoring points in different ways. You're going to get points by getting, uh, collecting or finding rather different types of animals. So the more different species you have in a row will be more points. You can have uh, scuba divers that you can send out. They're going to collect those treasure chests. You can also upgrade your submarine in various ways by using those crystals. And then whoever has the most eyes of the crack in each round is going to lose some points. At the very end of the game, you're going to get points for your longest group attached uh, adjacent cards of of that uh coral uh that pink looking thing there so that's something to work on kind of long term in the game you can upgrade parts of your ship and by the way so the artwork here is is very cool it's like a steampunk underwater type thing which is kind of unique i think um you know even this one <laughs> this one guy in his sub is actually sipping tea while he rides his submarine through the ocean um, and all of them are a little bit different. The subs look different, and they basically come apart in, in five different sections um, that each do something a little bit different. The top part where your driver is going to allow you to, I believe, get more cards on your turn, and then you've got your propeller in the back that's just going to give you straight-up victory points. Your big middle section there, that you see the numbers five and eight, that's how many fish you can collect each round. So however many different species you have in that row, up to five, up to eight, and you can always upgrade the ship. My one complaint about this game is while the components and the artwork are very cool, when you go to upgrade your sub and you take these pieces apart, they're really fiddly to deal with. 
And I'm really surprised that, you know, they're, they're nice, big, chunky cardboard pieces, but the actual puzzle piece, as you can see, like the notch in the hole are really small. They're like the size of regular jigsaw puzzle pieces, yeah. which are fine for that. But for this, you know, I'd much rather have a really like a wider kind of like notch that takes up almost like half of the, of each piece, I think would be a little sturdier. Um, you know, it's a very, very small complaint, uh, for how much fun this game is. I really do enjoy it. Um, artwork is great. Like I said, and, you know, talking about how this does with the family, we've got, uh, ages eight and up on this for board game geek. The community actually recommends six plus, which, mm. uh, <laughs> again, like, like we talked about with, um, with any re with reef and any kind of like abstract game like that, you know, you're, you're going to have to coach a kid. If you're going to play them in this game, a six year old, I mean, I don't know. It's just, you're going to destroy them. <laughs> yeah. I haven't played this game in a few years. I don't remember much about it, but the components look great and the artwork is great, right? It's got really, really nice looking, Nice, nice palette of blues in the background, and then yeah. nice vibrant pinks, and and there's you know the the red cracking. It's just it pops, you know. It looks it looks yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. Good table presence here. All the subs are unique artwork and style, which is cool. Yeah. And even the even the sea creatures, the the fish and the crabs and stuff have like little monocles and like, like top hats. And stuff. <laughs> it's very. It's just it's kooky, uh, but it's a lot of fun. And, you know, so, and, and, and a six year old, an eight year old, because maybe maybe. Maybe not a six year old. They're gonna love that. That's true. That's true. This is a game that could be out and just get played with instead of played fully right. um, with with folks, with younger folks, and eh, probably with adults as well. So that's Oceanos from Yellow Games, which uh, has quite a lot of real estate on my shelves these days. They put out a lot, a lot of good stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, Eric. So we're almost out of oxygen here. <laughs> We have to start heading back to the surface. I'm going to grab more treasure so nobody makes it back to the surface. <laughs> if I can't win, nobody's going to win. I'm taking up all the air. <laughs> so, folks, as usual, we would absolutely love to hear your comments below in this video. We would like to hear about any other board games featuring the ocean as a backdrop or theme. I know there is a ton of them that we have not even scratched the surface of them for sure. So let us know what your favorites are. And please, please, please remember that next week, August the 18th, we are going to do our first ever Board Game Dads live show where we have Eric and hopefully some people in the chat and, um, I don't know, lots of comments to talk about. Yeah, we'll see. It'll be interesting. We'll see how it goes. It could be awful, um, but I, I guarantee you it'll be funny. <laughs> I guarantee you it will be live. <laughs> <laughs> scouts honor on that one yeah all right eric anything else you want to add before we get back to the surface nope <laughs> <laughs> all right folks we'll see you next time